what is going on everyone it is me Mr. Mario and if you are clicking this you probably want to flash your Xbox 360 so this is going to be for all fats I'm going to cover all models and doesn't matter what type of motherboard you have or anything it doesn't matter what type of drive you have because I'm going to be covering all drive types in this guide I have guides on flashing fat drives however I'm doing this just because uh, there's been some new additions and all even though everything's mostly the same and honestly, I felt like now I could do a much better job actually making a video, editing it, and just putting everything together in one clip. So, this is going to be for all four drives. I'm going to have annotations down below, where if you just want to skip immediately to what drive you have, you can click the time mark on there, and you can pick out your drive. So, first off, I have all four drives lined up right here on my floor. You're first going to have to open up your Xbox 360 console and pull out the drive. I'm not going to help you out with this, because it's pretty simple to do. The tools are very accessible to find, and you could just look it up online. I know Llama.com has a great guide, Then there's just several great guides for taking apart a fat Xbox on YouTube and Google and all that. So you could just look that up and pull your drive out. Now you might have any one of these drives, you will have any one of these drives, and I'll show you what they are from left to right. So first off, if you have one like this, where the label is upside down, this is a Samsung drive, and it is recognized right there where it says Toshiba Samsung Storage Technology, just right there. This is a Samsung drive, they come in two variants, there is the MS-28 and the MS-25. Now, if you have an MS-25, you're just going to be flashing over an MS-28 firmware, if I remember correctly, it could be vice versa, since it's been a while since I've done a Samsung, but honestly, they're pretty easy to do, and it's really not going to make a difference there, so I'll go ahead and show you all that, and then right here, if you have a drive that looks like this, it'll be a Hitachi, and there are several Hitachis available. As you can see, this is a 79 drive. I picked out the 79 specifically because technically, this is the hardest Hitachi to do, so if you could do this, you can do any of the Hitachis, and the only thing that makes it harder is that you will need a blank disc to burn off a 79 unlock disc. However, sometimes you might not need to do it, and I'll go into that later, but this is a Hitachi drive. Right here, these two look a lot alike, but there is a difference. First off, right here, we have the BenQ drives, and this is a VAD 6038, as identified right there. And even down here, it's going to say BenQ, it, it might say Phillips. I mean, it's going to change, it's going to be a real big variant on whatever drive you have. But if it's Phillips or BenQ, it is a BenQ drive, and all of them are VAD 6038. And finally, right here, Technically, the hardest of all of the fat drives, we have the Lighton DG16-2S. This is identified right there as the 16D2S. And then, where is Lighton? I'm not, there we go, Philips and Lighton. So right there. Sometimes people will get the, because both of them are Philips, but there's BenQ Philips and Lighton Philips. Sometimes people will just refer both of them as Philips, which is wrong. One of them is Lighton, one of them is BenQ. There is a big difference. So you can't get them mixed up. Anyways, we got all four of the drives right there. Now I'm going to show you what all you will need to flash a drive. And technically, this is going to be stuff I use. It really doesn't matter what you use because there's so many ways to do this. But I will show you what all you will need. Alright, so first off, I'm going to be showing what I use, and you could buy these things. Um, this is more if you have multiple consoles, or if you're doing a flashing service of any kind, it'd be good to get these. If you're only doing one system, then you could do it the cheap way, but this is the way I am doing it. So first off, what I do is I use the X360 USB Pro. Now, I'll go ahead and open it up, and I'll show you all what it is. This is about $40, $50, I believe, but it has a SATA cable in here. This is for the data port on any of your drives, so as you can see, it just hooks in right there to the back of your drive. So you have that, and it is a little device like this, which is essentially a SATA to USB adapter. Uh, except it's specially designed for the Xbox. So this is what I use for data, however you will also need something to power it. Now, for my power, to make everything easier, what I do is I use the Executor CK3 Lite. Now, I don't think they sell this anymore. They do make something else. And there's actually a device, I don't remember what it is. It's about, I want to say, $80, $90. But it's essentially the CK3 Lite and the X360 USB Pro combined into one. So you can just have one device instead of two. And I'll go ahead and open this up. This is essentially, I'll show you all right here, a... 
360 power adapter for a drive to a 4 Molex adapter. So if you have any of these in your computer, you could just use that as power, or you could buy a external Molex power supply, which is what I use for flashing all of my drives. So I just have these hooked up into the back, and normally I'm good to go, like so, and I can flash any of my drives. Now here's the cool thing, if you want to do it like this, you could have both of these two devices and you could use these for any Samsung drive and any BenQ drive for flashing. However, you can use them on most Hitachi drives. There are several variants of the Hitachi drives, um, all the way up to the 78s. However, if you have a Hitachi 79 drive, just like me, you're going to have to have a blank CDR so you can burn off a Hitachi 79 unlocked disc. So that's going to be the extra thing that you will need. Aside from that, you'll just need this device, this device right here, and then a power connection, a SATA connection, and you'll be good to go. Now one thing some people might be asking right now is about this. If this is only a USB to a SATA connection, why would you spend $40 on this when you can get something like this? This is the same thing, it is a SATA to USB connection as you all can see right here. And the reason why you can't use this is just because they really don't work. I really can't explain it, but they just do not work with Xbox drives. I have been told, however, some people have said that you can use one of these to flash a Hitachi drive, but you can't flash any of the other drives. They will not be recognized in Jungle Flasher, which is the program we're going to be using. So if you are using one of these, this guide will not help you because I have not used these. I don't have intention of using them and I really don't support them as the thing. So if you're coming to this guide and specifically using one of these, you can follow the guide, but you're going to be on your own. I won't be able to help you out with this. Now finally, out of all these drives, you might be asking what's up with the light on because I haven't covered it. Well, with the light on, this is going to be the hardest drive out of all of them, as I said, to hack up. So we have it right here. And for this, you're going to need some power, well, some data, some power, but you're also going to need one more thing to retrieve your drive key. You're going to need a probe. So there are several variants of the probe. You can buy the Probe 3, and all of the stuff I'm showing you could buy off X consoles or ModChipCentral.com. And uh, this is what the Probe 3 is. It is just a really, really big power adapter or power cable, as you all can see. But right here, it has a inline power button just to cut off the power real quick when you're pulling the drive key off and it has an actual probe on here so you will need one of these now you can make one of these on your own it's not too hard or you can buy one like this for about 12 or 15 dollars i think that includes shipping and handling they're not too expensive but if you want to make one on your own there's several good guides you can find online you could just look up diy probe or make your own probe 3 anything like that and you'll be good to go. So you will need one of those. Oh, and the final thing for a light on drive, in order to get into it, this is the only one you need to do this. So don't worry if you have any of the other drives, but if you have a light on drive, you're going to have to flip it over at one point when you're pulling the drive key off of it and you need to unscrew the four Phillips head screwdrivers that are on here. So for this, you will need a small Phillips head screwdriver. I don't know what the head number is on it, but you will need to partially take apart your drive, but it's very easy. None of these drives require any soldering or anything really hard for that matter. So don't worry about that. But those are all the tools I use for my flashing jobs whenever I flash drives. Now, as I said, this is my way of flashing drives. Uh, not everyone's going to want to do this, not everyone's going to spend all that money, and I completely understand that. That's why I'm also going to show you the cheapest way to flash a drive, which is what I used to do at one point. So all you really need for this, aside from the light-on, the light-ons, you still need a probe, okay? You will still need a probe for a light-on drive. That is the only one that needs that, and of course a screwdriver to take it apart. But aside from that, for any of the other drives, aside from using, I guess, a CD technically on that one, the only other thing you will need is a SATA cable if you want to do it like this. First off, you must have a desktop PC. And second, you're going to have to use the motherboard on there. You're going to have to open up your PC, find if you have a SATA connection on there. Hopefully you do. And you need to hook up this SATA cable to the master SATA port otherwise known as SATA 0, or it might even be SATA 1 if you don't have a SATA 0. Normally, if you have a prefabricated PC, it is where 
your hard drive has already been hooked up by the company that built it. If it's something you built on your own, then it might be one, it might be a different color, it might be blue, for example, normally I see blue for that. It might be labeled as SATA zero, but you're also gonna to have to check in your BIOS. This one I can't help you with, you're gonna be on your own for that, due to the fact that I'm not gonna be covering it that way, and every PC is different, so I'm not going to be able to help you specifically. So second, for all of this, as I said, we have data covered, but you're going to need the actual Xbox 360 console for this. Now what you can do is you're going to need to have, first off, you need to have a video cable plugged into your ex actual Xbox, because the last thing we want to do is have your Xbox 360 turn off while it is flashing. And speaking of power, we're also going to need your 360 hooked up to the power. So you're going to need it hooked up somewhere, and you're going to have to turn on your Xbox. So I don't have it turned on, but we'll just turn it on. And then have an HDMI cable or an AV cable just plugged in. That is just to ensure that the Xbox will not turn off. Because if you keep it on long enough without any video output on it, it will turn off. I'd recommend just using the video slot because sometimes the Xbox won't want to boot if you have an HDMI cable plugged in and it's not plugged into a TV or a monitor. So I recommend just using the actual AV port right here. But you'll need that. And then what you can do hypothetically is take your drive like so and hook it up to the power right here. Now you're going to want to do this while your Xbox is still off. And then, instead of hooking it up to the SATA port for data right here, you're going to want to take your SATA cable, your spare one that you have, and hook up this end to your motherboard on your PC. And that way, you'll be able to flash a drive. From there, you can turn on the system, and then you can get into Jungle Flasher, uh, check to see what your drive is, and then you can start flashing from there. Now, this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to flash the drives and all. However, if you have any troubleshooting on here, if you're doing it this method, you're going to probably have to look it up online. Again, as I said, I'm going to be using the X360 USB Pro, which if you want to flash a few drives, I highly recommend because it is great. And I've had a PC that was great for flashing via motherboard. However, the PC that I have that's custom built it cannot flash at all through SATA. It will crash, it will freeze up, and it is just a completely unsafe process. So that is why I ended up investing in this tool right here. But that is the cheapest way of doing it, honestly. Um, you can use an existing SATA cable that you have in your computer if it's not hooked up to anything important, or you can buy one off eBay like two for 99 cents. If you buy these at Best Buy or any other store, it's like one of them for $20. So I don't recommend that. Anyways, now that we have all the tools situated for what we need and now that I have kind of given you a rundown on this, let's go ahead and get into flashing the actual drives. Alright everyone, so this is what you're going to need to do. So first off, now that we have all the hardware underway, we're going to want to get the software underway. So first you want to come over here to jungleflasher.net and you want to come over to downloads and we're going to be downloading Jungle Flasher. This is the best program that you can use for flashing honestly. But right now the latest build is 0 0.1.94 beta 320. You're going to just want to download that and you should be good to go. Next we need the firmware because Jungle Flasher does not come combined with any firmware. Firmware. So I'm going to have all the download links for these down below. Just check the links in the description. But we're going to want Light Touch 3 right here. So you're going to want to just pull it off here. Next, we're also going to want Light Touch 3 for Hitachi drives if you're doing that. And finally, if you are on Windows 7 or a 64-bit operating system, I'm currently using Windows 7 64-bit Professional. You're going to want to use Driver Signature Enforcement Overrider if you are doing it through direct motherboard hookups. If you are using the X360 USB Pro like I am, you will not need this. So now that you have everything downloaded, I'm gonna show you all what to do. All right, so first off, right here, I have all these downloaded. So we're gonna to want to go ahead, extract our RAR file for Jungle Flasher, and just extract everything. So extract Light Touch 3 for Hitachi, and then extract Latest Eye Extreme. Now what you wanna do is you wanna come over to Latest Eye Extreme, go into firmware right here, and grab everything, and I'm just going to completely cut it and move it out, and then go over to Jungle Flasher, firmware, and place it in there as it says place firmware here. Next, you wanna do the same thing with your Hitachi firmware. So you wanna come over here, grab everything, so just cut it, and then go back to Jungle Flasher, firmware, 
and paste it in there. So now you should have every variant of the firmware on hand and you should be good to go. Second, you wanna come over to libusb, copy over this DLL file, this is all in Jungle Flasher, and paste it in the root right next to jungleflasher.exe. Second, you wanna do the same thing with Portio. You're gonna have Portio 32 and Portio 64. You wanna copy both of these and paste them out here. These are going to be also if you are doing the direct motherboard hookup, as I said. Once you have all of these, you should be able to run Jungle Flasher like so, and you should be good to go. Now, sometimes it takes a little bit to come on, but right here, um, it's giving me this error because I haven't disabled my uh, driver signature enforcement overrider, or I haven't enabled it, whatever you wanna call it, but I'm using USB for this, so this is irrelevant for me. So I really don't care too much, okay? Yeah, it likes to bring up some errors sometimes. That's because I have nothing hooked up right now on my computer. But as you can see, this is going to be Jungle Flash right here. I will show you all how to use everything, but you should be good to go on this. If it runs, you should be okay. Now, there's going to be two things I need to mention. I'll just exit out of there. Number one... If you're flashing your Xbox right now, go ahead and update your system update to the latest console update available, um, or at least something higher, like something in the uh, 15,000 series. Right now, um, the way you can check is you can just go into your system settings and you could check from there and see what kernel version you're running. But at the moment, right now, May 18th, when I'm recording this, the latest kernel available is 16203. So you wanna update to something like that and you should be good to go because at one point, Microsoft ended up reflashing a bunch of drives and they did a whole mess of things with the firmware. So just go ahead and be on my level with this and we'll be okay. Second, before we start this up, if you are using 64-bit OS, this is what you wanna do. You wanna download this program, as I said, Driver Signature Enforcement Overrider uh, version 1.3b, and you wanna double click this EXE, run it, and I'm not going to do it here just because I really don't need it, but right here, you wanna hit next, you wanna hit yes, and then you wanna hit enable test mode. And then from here, you're gonna hit next, and from that, you want to restart your computer, and when you restart your computer in the corners, it's going to say that Windows 7 is running in test mode, and it might take a bit longer to boot up out of BIOS. However, if it says that you're in test mode, that means that you're able to flash a drive through Windows 7 64-bit native, and you should be good to go. So, once you're all set up with that, let's go ahead, hook up our first drive, and start flashing. All right, everyone, so first off, we are going to be flashing a Samsung drive. So if you don't already have your drive hooked up and powered, and this is what you wanna do, you wanna go ahead, open up Jungle Flasher, not the text file like I just tried to do because Windows goofed on me, but you wanna open up Jungle Flasher right here. And as you can see, there are no errors that came up this time. That is because I have everything hooked up and we're good to go. So first off, what you wanna do for a Samsung drive, as you can see, I have it on a USB only. I only have one port selected. And if you have your drive on, but it's not reading on here, and you're sure you're doing everything right, go ahead and hit this little ellipse right here, and it will load up everything. Now, I'm gonna be showing my drive keys on here, honestly. This really doesn't matter too much because these are systems that I either don't have anymore or I just don't care about too much. So uh, more than likely caught probably broken systems or just nulled out DVD keys, but it doesn't matter too much. Anyways, as you can see right here, uh, it shows everything on here, TSST Corp, that's just Toshiba Samsung, it has an MS-28, and right now, I already dumped this once, but if you have never dumped your DVD key, it will say unverified, and there will be a gray key instead of a gold key right there. What you want to do for Samsung is you want to come over to MTK Flash 32, hit Sammy Unlock, and you want to read this right here. Now... I don't have custom firmware on this drive. Well, I, I might, I'm not 100% sure, honestly, but I definitely don't have an older version of iExtreme. So if you have a older version of iExtreme, definitely read this. I have had to do this on one system, but if you don't, you can just go ahead, hit yes to proceed on here. As you can see, it does stage one, stage two, and you now have your drive in vendor mode. Now this is what you wanna do. You don't wanna mess with any of these, okay? Just do not mess with that, trust me. What you want to do is you want to hit read and it is going to read over your firmware now the samsung drives take the longest to flash it's not too bad but you have to write every piece on there uh, bit by bit so what we want to do is we just want to come over to our flashing folder which i'll navigate to 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a folder, just call it drives. And here I'm just gonna call this Samsung. Here you wanna save your official, well, your original firmware right there. And when it brings this up, do you wanna auto load Light Touch Plus? You hit yes. Now, as you can see, I already have Light Touch Plus on this drive, so it really doesn't matter too much, but it's going to be the same thing. The only difference is if you're running stock, it's just going to tell you stock firmware. But you want to make sure it's Light Touch version 2.01 for this. Also, you want to save your drive key manually. So you hit save drive key and you just want to save this key.bin. Finally, you want to save to file your custom firmware, which is right there. You hit save, come back to MTK Flash 32 and write. Now what it's doing is it's just going to erase your chip. Don't worry, it's not going to kill your drive or anything. It sounds a lot worse than what it is. But as you can see, it's now slowly writing. So I'll go ahead, shut up, and let it write over. All right, so as you can see, right here it is now done writing everything. It takes a bit to do, but it's not too bad. And here it does the flash verification test. Essentially, it reads your drive firmware over again, just to make sure that its integrity is stable and that everything is good to go. So now it says that write verified is okay. That's great. The final thing you wanna do is outro slash ATA reset. You must do this. You must do this. But hit outro slash ATA reset. It will send the vendor outro. And as you can see, we are back on TSST Corp instead of vendor mode, which is exactly what we want and your drive key is now verified, so you're good to go. Now, if it doesn't work like that, when I would do direct motherboard, sometimes I would do outro slash ATA reset and it wouldn't let me do anything. It would just bring up nothing here. So normally what I had to do is I would have to do that and then turn off and turn on my drive and I was good. But once you have that, congratulations, you just flashed a Samsung drive. So let's go on to the next drive. All right, so right now we're going to do Hitachi drives. Now, if you have a 79 drive like me, if you have a 79 drive, first you're going to have to burn off a 79 unlock CD. And sometimes you might not need to do it. Sometimes it will just automatically unlock, but it's always good to have that on hand. So what you want to do right here is you want to come over to Jungle Flasher again, Hitachi GDR3120. And right here where it says 79 unlock, you want to click this button, well this link where it says insert the 79 unlock audio CD. You click that and it will bring you to a link where it will automatically want you to download 79 unlock.rar. You want to go ahead and save that, and I'm going to show you everything on here. We want to come back, go over to 79 Unlock RAR, extract that, go over here, over here, and you're going to have a bin and a Q file and a CDT. Now what you want to do is if you have Image Burn already installed, which it's a free program, I highly recommend using it to burn your disks, go ahead, open up Image Burn right here, open up the Q sheet, and then have your disk that you want to burn. Now what we're going to do is you just need a regular CDR. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be as cheap as can be and you just want to burn that over. All right, everyone. So now that you are on the Hitachi section, you have a 79 drive. As I said, make sure you burn off that 79 unlock disc. Now this is what you want to do. Once you're in Jungle Flasher, go ahead, come to Hitachi. Everything is loaded right here. You want to hit Sin Mode B. And normally you have to do all of this. Go ahead and read it. But since I have an X360 USB Pro, I'm normally able to just bypass it. So I'm just going to hit OK right there. Now once it hits, says Mode B done and everything is brought back, you're in Mode B. Now what you need to do is go ahead, open up your drive from here and load up that 79 unlock disk. This is what we're going to have to do to make the drive flashable if you have a 79 drive. All right, so I just loaded up. I'm just waiting a few seconds. But once you wait, you just hit 79 unlock one time. And if it fails to read, that's just because it's having issues. Sometimes uh, my drive's a little bit wonky right here, and you just have to spend a few seconds with it. But uh, you can just hit it again. As you can see, it plays, it pauses, and it ejects it. Once your drive ejects, it should be unlocked. You're good to go. Now what you want to do first off is you want to dump your drive. So you select dump drive and read to source. So we're going to come over here and call this hit 79. We're going to save the official firmware right there, and we want to save our drive key as well. Now what you want to do over here is come back to Hitachi and hit Flash Light Touch Plus. So you want to hit Flash Light Touch Plus, and it brings us up right here, Flashing Stability Tests Report Stable. Do you wish to continue? You hit Yes. Now you just wait a few seconds, it flashes over your sectors, and as you can see, 
read back and compare completed, write verified, flash completed. If flash is completed, all you have to do now is you can just go ahead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, pull out the disc and then close the tray and you can go ahead and restart it and you should be good to go. All right, so what I did, I just power cycled my drive and I'll even check it on here, but everything is good to go. If everything is stable, congratulations, you just flashed over your Hitachi, so it was easy as that. Next, we're gonna go flash the BinQ drive. All right, everyone, we got two drives down and we got two more to go. So our third drive that we're going to be exploiting will be the BinQ drive. So first off, you need to load it up. We have a VAD 6038 right here. And this is what you wanna do. First, you wanna come over to MTK Flash 32, which will be on Jungle Flasher. You wanna hit BinQ Unlock. It's going to unlock your drive real quick by sending some magic keys over and wait a few seconds. There we go. So as you can see, we are in vendor mode. Now what you wanna do is you wanna read over your flash. So that's just going to dump over your drive firmware. And then what you can do from there is you can go ahead, pull off your drive key and then make a custom firmware out of it. So right here, I already made a BinQ folder. You wanna hit save for the official firmware. Yes for auto load light touch plus. As you can see, I already have light touch three on here, which is the latest revision. But you wanna go ahead and save over your drive key, save over your custom firmware and then you wanna come back to MTK Flash 32, hit right, it's going to erase your chipset, which sounds a lot worse than what it is, but it's all good, it's all safe, and it's going to write over really, really fast compared to what we were doing with the Samsung. Now, as you can see, once that's written over, we're just going to have it flash verification test, and it's almost done, reading bank three, and there we go, write verified okay. Once it says that, you hit outro slash ATA reset, and it's going to bring you back to this screen. Now, sometimes it might say it doesn't find your DVD key. That's not a huge deal, but that's it. Congratulations, you just flashed a BinQ drive. Now let's go ahead and finish this off with the light on. All right, everyone. Now I'm going to be making this quick video right here that I'm just going to splice in. This is a light on drive that I just took apart. Now this is what's going to look like. You're going to need upside down and you're going to need your SATA and your power hooked up. Now you're going to need that probe three and this is how you want it hooked up. You want the side with nothing special on it hooked into your CK3 or your Xbox itself, your Xbox motherboard. And right here, going to the drive, you want the part that has the actual probe tied into it along with the button right here. So this is the point you're going to be probing. I will show you all right here. It says MXP01 and I'll even probe it like so. You're just going to be probing it like that. That's about it, really. So I'm going to show this on camera. Don't worry. But I'm just showing you all just so you're familiar with this. This is what your drive should look like. It's pretty simple, but it does look intimidating at first. All right. Hey, everyone. So this is the last drive that we're going to be messing with. It is the light on. And I hope for this you all enjoy the little picture-on-picture -picture commentary that I'm showing here. So I'm going to have this in the corner just so you can see what I'm doing, at least for extracting the key. So if you look in the corner right now, I have my Probe 3 that is hooked up. And uh, the light is on, that means it's all powered, it's all good to go. Now this is what you want to do. On Jungle Flasher, you want to come to DVD Key 32. And first off, you want to hit Fat Key and wait a few seconds. Now it's going to give you this MTK Vendor Intro Failed. Now this is what you want to do. You want to just follow the on-screen instructions, but by Probe 3 Cable, uh, right here when they say the button, they're talking about this little button right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to turn it off, probe our point, Turn it back on, so as you can see, don't lift it, but the light is still on right there, and hit yes. If you hit yes, it should immediately give you that. Now extract complete, complete excuse me, to ensure, to continue, you must ensure probe is removed, power off drive, wait five seconds, power on, press OK. So by power off drive, we're going to actually cut the power to it right here. So if you're using an Xbox as power, you're just going to have to unplug the drive directly just do it carefully but unplug the power and then plug it back in while the xbox is still on do not turn off the xbox i repeat don't turn it off if you're doing that but this is what you want to do you pull off the probe turn off the drive one two three four good enough turn it back on and hit okay now as you can see we got our key right here drives we're going to come here go to light on save our key save our inquiry, save our identify, save our serial, save our dummy. And you want to hit uh, all, uh, yeah, auto load light touch plus, hit yes right here. 
Now this is just a BS DVD key because this had 800 firmware on it. And now here's the thing, if it's showing Light Touch Plus 1.1 like it's showing right here, you're going to want to open up your target firmware. Sometimes it will do this. You want to come to flashing, you want to go over to your firmware where you loaded it up, and I need to remember what exactly it is, but you can just find wherever your version 3 is right here. Alright, now that was just a little issue I ran into, and that issue was just there due to the fact that I was flashing from a 800 firmware. So right here we're just going to be flashing Light Touch 3. I just had to make sure that it was the 16D2S, and the revision numbers really aren't going to make a huge difference because on these later firmwares, uh, on the later dashboards, everything became one firmware. So this is what you want to do. Um, also save over your drive key, and I'll show you actually what to do if you're in a situation like that. So we can go ahead and go back over to our drives, go to light on, go over to our key. Actually, we already had the key saved. My bad. Go to manual spoofing, load, then flashing, drives, light on, key, pull the key over there, go OK. Hit save to file, to save that. You want to come over to MTK flash now. And now this is what you're going to want to do. Now, make sure you're going to do this. I'm just going to show you all right here. Uh, you're going to want to do this um, just so you don't brick your light on. And if you do brick it on accident, it's cool. It's very easy to unbrick. But again, if you're using an actual Xbox for this, just go ahead, unplug your drive, and replug it just on the power. But right here, we're going to be using this as our power if you're looking at the picture in picture. So, this is what you want to do you want to hit light on erase. And when it brings that up, you want to hit yes. And as soon as you see the. Uh, little dots right here, just the little periods, uh, start going on screen, you want to just restart your drive real quick. So you hit yes, you hit yes, hit yes again, turn it off, turn it back on really quick. As you can see, it turned to zero, zero, now it's 72, and there we go, our drive is in vendor mode. Perfect. You want to hit over right, it's going to erase your chip right now, it's going to write over your firmware. Now once it writes over your firmware, it's just going to verify as before, and then you should be good to go. And now, they are still in vendor mode, but it's been flashed over. You hit outro slash ATA reset. It brings you back to this screen right here, and as you can see, you now have a flashed light on. So that's about it, everyone. Anyways, I hope this tutorial has really helped you all out. I believe in, you know, making this information free and all that. I want to help out people when I can. So anyways, that's about it for flashing your drives. You should now be good with flashing any fat Xbox drive. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you for watching, everyone.